It's been just over a year since the Webb Space Telescope was launched and the detailed images it's delivered have been among the most breathtaking pictures of the past year. Although the telescope was 14 years behind schedule and vastly over budget, for scientists and stargazers it's already proved well worth the wait. The James Webb Space Telescope is about 100 times more sensitive than its 30-year-old predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. In all, its mirror is around 25 meters square. It's made up of 18 hexagonal segments coated with a thin layer of vaporized gold that reflects infrared light especially well. The mirror's body is made of beryllium, a lightweight metal that holds its form even in extreme cold. Hard to believe, but it took only 48 grams of gold to coat all of its segments. Remote-controlled actuators are mounted on the back of each segment. The small motors can pivot and turn them in six directions. The main mirror collects light and reflects it onto a smaller mirror. It in turn focuses the light to the telescope's measuring instruments, probing the universe's mysteries with a hitherto unknown sharpness and clarity, and recording stunning images like this shot of a vast stellar nursery called the Tarantula Nebula, packed with young stars. Or this one from the Carina Nebula that has been dubbed Cosmic Cliffs. There are razor-sharp images of galaxies far beyond our own Milky Way, like the Cartwheel, 500 million light years away but also magnificent shots from our immediate neighborhood, the solar system, among them Jupiter, in exquisite detail, and the ringed gas giant Neptune, seemingly close enough to touch. For months now, the James Webb Space Telescope has been revealing the wonders of the universe in unprecedented ways, and this is just the beginning. Well, earlier I spoke to Sarah Kendrew, an astronomer working for the European Space Agency in Baltimore as a member of the James Webb Space Mission. I asked her if it was worth the effort. Uh, yes, Webb was uh, absolutely worth the effort. It was a long road uh, to get there, but um, the data that we're seeing uh, from the telescope, we're only one year into this mission. Um, everything that comes back is just uh, fantastic in quality, in depth, in detail that we can see. And we're already seeing so many new things uh, uh, in all different areas of the universe. Um, so we're really excited about the rest of the mission and very pleased where we are today. The images that James Webb produces are being described as windows into our history of our universe in layman's terms, and I assure you you're talking to one. What do you see in these images and how does it help us? We understand life, the universe, everything. Yeah, so astronomy as a science, you know, we don't, we don't work in a lab um, like a chemist or a biologist would. Uh, so really for us to learn about the universe, we just have to... Um, look all around us. You know, the universe, in fact, is our lab. So what we try to do is uh, observe and record light in as many different ways as we can at different wavelengths, all the way from the radio to the X-ray. So what we're seeing um, with Webb in the infrared um, is a huge technological step forward uh, for that particular kind of light. Um, and so it's kind of opening up a huge new kind of parameter space in terms of how deep we can see in the universe and the level of detail that we can see in the images. So in that sense, it really is a kind of a new window onto, into the universe uh, that's showing us the universe in uh, new and exciting different ways and is giving us new pieces of the puzzle uh, of understanding the physics uh, of everything we see around us. Just how much has, and it's only been a year, but how much has the Webb Telescope shaken up our knowledge of the universe's history? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, it's still very early days. We are still learning a lot about how the telescope operates and how to get the best uh, quality data um, out of the observatory. Um, but what we're seeing so far, it's just been you know, staggering. The performance is uh, really fantastic. Um, 
there's still a lot of things, uh, a lot of new things to learn. There have been some really tantalizing hints that particularly when we look at the galaxies in the very early universe, which is something really Webb was uh, optimized um, uh, to study, um, that there may be some challenges to uh, our understanding of what these galaxies should look like. Um, it's really getting us very excited for what new things we will discover in the years to come. It's extremely early days and, you know, science progresses slowly. It takes time to uh, understand and interpret what we're seeing. Um, oh. But there's absolutely no doubt we're going to be discovering lots of new things about the universe. OK, very quickly. It's a hard question to answer quickly. Will the telescope help us find life in space? <laughs> Yeah, that's a hard one to answer quickly. But I mean, finding life in space, like definitive evidence of life in space is extremely challenging because you have to rule out every other mechanism that could have caused the, the teeny tiny signal that you're seeing. What Webb is definitely doing already is uh, un helping us understand better the physics and chemistry um, of these exoplanets. So these are planets orbiting other stars in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, every planet we have observed with Webb has already shown us like new different chemistry that we have never been able to see before. So it's going to give us a really big step towards that big goal of finding life in the universe. Excellently done. Sarah Kendrew from the James Webb Space Telescope mission. Thanks so much. Thank you. Kareem El Badri is an astronomer at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. Just a few months ago, he actually made headlines when his team discovered the closest known black hole to Earth. Mr. El Badri, pleasure having you on DW. Tell me, how has the James Webb Space Telescope changed astronomy? Hi, right, good to be here. Yeah, so the, uh, the JWST is, has touched probably all fields of astronomy in the first year that it's been operating. The biggest innovation it offers is that rather than looking at optical light, like what we can see with our eyes, it mostly looks at infrared light, so longer wavelengths. And that lets it study objects that have different temperatures, typically objects that are cooler than we can see in optical light, and objects that are really far away, so their their light is redshifted by the Doppler shift. You're an expert on black holes and binary stars. Will you be able to find more of them with the help of the James Webb Telescope? I hope so. Uh, so the Webb Telescope, it, is, it has a, a relatively small field of view, so it's not so good for uh, looking for something if you don't know where it is. But it's very sensitive compared to any other telescope we have access to. And so uh, the, the mode that we hope to use it in is to find objects that we think might be black holes or interesting binaries with other telescopes and then take deeper image of the, images of them with Webb. So these pictures are, of course, incredible and breathtaking. But to those of us here on Earth who are not in your field of expertise, what does James Webb do for us? How will what people discover through the telescope help us here on Earth? All right. Well, it's unlikely that it's going to lead to any immediate technological innovation or anything like that, at least not, you know, on the time scale of years or, or probably even decades. I, I think of it more as, you know, it, it, it gives us a, a broader view of what's out there, uh, both what we could see with our eyes, uh, what we could do with earlier telescopes, and what we, we can't see, but we can only infer the effects of uh, indirectly, for example, through its gravity. Uh, so, uh, telescopes like, like Webb, uh, shine new light on on uh, you know the ingredients of the galaxy uh, and and the universe uh, and we on earth are just a, a tiny part of that uh, so I, I really think the the biggest thing we can take away from it uh, for you know relatively small investment is is learning what's out there yeah uh, what parts of the universe we can really start to see now uh, and how much more there is to discover. And what future discoveries are you looking forward to? Yeah, so like I said, uh, JWST is, is most good at looking in the infrared. So it can look at objects that are cool, right? Hot objects like stars emit most of their light at shorter wavelengths that we can see with our eyes. But infrared is mostly cold objects. So personally, I'm going to use JWST to look at brown dwarfs. 
Uh, they're a class of star of objects that are lower mass than stars, so they're too cool to emit uh, light that we can see with our eyes. Uh, but they're perfect for for a uh, telescope like JWST. Fascinating stuff, astrophysicist Kareem El Badri. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, have a good one.